Today I want to talk about spells, about how to make spells or modify existing spells to make them interesting and magical. I've made a fireside talk video about magic in general before my thoughts on that about hard and soft magic system and what I think makes magic interesting in general. If you are interested in that leave a link up here. But let's get into today's topic. First I want to discuss what makes spells boring and mundane to have an example of what we don't want. A spell feels mundane if the effect of the spell could be easily replicated by a mechanical device, a lamp for example, or a grenade. This obviously depends on the level of technology in your setting. In a setting without gunpowder, a huge explosion would seem magical. And an everyday smartphone, like the one I'm filming this video on, and the one you're possibly watching this on, would seem like a magical device just a few decades ago. Second, if the spell name and the spell description just give you what the spell does in dry game terms and nothing else beyond that. So light, knock and even fireball are boring spells. Now, from these examples of what makes spells boring, we can deduce what we want to make a spell interesting. A spell effect shall not be easy replicable by technology. Therefore, for example, if you want to have a light spell, just don't make it a small light that you can hold in your hand. Make it a swarm of fireflies in every color of the rainbow that follow you around and that you can direct within viewing distance to light up areas you want to inspect. The name and the spell description shall be flavorful and full of fluff. I can understand why a rulebook would just limit themselves to, to spell names that tell you what the spell does and short spell description, otherwise a rulebook with hundreds of spells would be even thicker and it would be harder to find specific spells you're looking for. But we are not trying to make hundreds of spells here, we're just trying to make one or two spells each session, each adventure that we can give out to our players. So uh, finding them in a rule book and, and compressing them to the barest minimum of words are not our concern. Well, now that we know that, how can we go about to make spells like this actually? It is hard to come up with stuff, if you've got no framework to work with, endless possibilities are likely to overwhelm your creativity. So we have to limit ourselves with a chosen framework so that we can be creative within that framework. Let's begin building that framework by choosing a setting that the spell is set in. This already limits our possibility of spells to only those that make sense within the setting. Then to further narrow this down, we choose a theme the spell shall be based on. For example, holy, elemental, eldritch or fairy. Next we choose the origin of the spell, where it came from. And that will already give us a few ideas about possible spell effects. For example, a blessing, a curse, an illusion or mind control. The spell's origin will often come together with the theme. If the origin of a spell is a great old one, for example, it comes together with the Eldritch theme. From here, we can come up with an effect. What should the spell do? It helps at this point to think about it in an abstract way. Rather than say the spell shall unlock a door, think about the spell shall get you into a locked room 
or through a barrier. This gives you far more option how a spell can achieve the desired effect. The spell can turn you into mist so you can slip underneath the door. Maybe the spell shifts the door into shadow so you can just pass through the shadow of the door. It could teleport you into the room. It could be a battering ram. Pick something that is appropriate to the theme you have chosen. At this point, let me cite a few of the guidelines for new spells from Worlds Without Number, as I happen to agree with them. Spells should not substitute for other classes. Since this is a team-based game, and you could always get some hirelings to give some skills that your character doesn't possess, the spells shouldn't make a single caster self-sufficient in every situation and take away from other classes specialty and spotlight. Also, I feel this is similar to my rule that a spell shall not have an effect that is recreatable by mundane means. Spells should not have simple numerical bonuses, because that is boring. So instead of making a spell that uh, gives you plus four to strength, how about a spell that turns you into a gorilla? Spells should not offer cheap and easy combat damage. Let me quote directly from the rules here. It's important that the combat spells they do have been heavy, loud, clumsy things rather than easy magical bolts of unavoidable damage. Area effect spells should not normally be able to exclude friendlies from their damage. If the spell's damaging effect is clean and simple, it should only affect one target. Think of mages as artillery rather than snipers. When they hit something, they tend to hit everything around it too. There are several reasons for that. One of them is that reliable single target damage can easily be achieved by mundane means, like a sword or a crossbow. Spells that change the battlefield dynamic are more interesting anyhow, as that is not easily achieved by mundane means. Spells that sprout walls of flesh-eating plants from the ground, for example, or turn it into lava, or confuse your enemies so they can't discern between friend and foe. Spells should not create permanent magical effects or valuable matter. I think this is mainly a balance concern, a bit more for the background, to not make it too easy for spellcasters to accumulate wealth and magical effects stacking up everywhere. But I could see where permanent magical effects might be interesting, but more like unwanted magical side effects that stick around way longer than the caster intended. A spell that has a powerful effect, that is quite specific, is more interesting than a general but less powerful spells. The players will try to create situations where the specific powerful spell is useful and use it for creative problem solving. In general, the more magic you have in your system, the less special and magical each spell will feel. If you've got three cantrips in your system, those won't feel magical at all. But I've discussed this more in depth in my magic video. So it's better at this point to choose a peculiar effect that solves a problem in an unexpected and out-of-the-box way. Something that goes against common sense and defies logic. Back to the knock spell. Instead of just unlocking the door, how about a spell that animates the door lock so it has eyes, a mouth and a face and you can talk with it and try to convince it of opening the door for you. But it might also call out to the guards if it doesn't like your face. Then 
when you have an idea of how the spell should work, do a short, dry and very mechanical spell description just to nail that down. Don't worry about exploits and balance at this point. Your players will find those exploits for you. If you are worried that a spell might break your entire campaign, how about introducing it in very limited fashion, like a one-use-only scrawl, or in the hands of an expendable NPC that you can kill off if the spell is too powerful. Personally, I don't worry about that too much. I can always change the campaign around the newfound abilities of the player to keep things going and keep the tension up. And now it is time to add the fluff and flavor. Start by asking yourself where the spell originally came from. What god, demon or wizard made it? What would they have named the spell? Or would the spell be named after them, like Tensor's floating disc or the inescapable Huck of Gmoth? And in which language would the spell originally have been named? Maybe the spell is a short rhyme, a long chant, or just a single magical word of power. And when it comes to actually casting the spell, what does that look like? Does it need components, gestures, spoken words? Is it a hidden spell? Is it an occult spell? Does it take an elaborate ritual? Finally, add some fluff to the spell description. Where the spell originally came from and why, or maybe a famous casting of the spell. Basically a very short story right there that give someone will be read it an idea of how the spell can be used. Finally, at the end, sprinkle more fluff over everything. Make it more thematic. If it is a holy spell, make it more pompous. Demonstrate the nature of the god it came from. If it is a nature spell, involve plants and critters and mushrooms in the casting. If it is an eldritch spell, use portals and summons and tentacles. Let me give you a few examples of spells that I like, and then I will make a spell myself following these guidelines. Cursement. You weave a threat through the body of a dying being, restoring them to health, but twisting them to your own desire. You may rewife one creature or being that has died within the last hour, quietly sewing them back together with magic threat. They are restored to one hit point at the end of the spell and be a series of silvered stitch marks across their body. The caster may also choose to have the target hobbled or changed in some way by sewing on different body parts or reorganizing their limbs. In addition to any superficial changes, the caster may incur a permanent disadvantage against one of the victim's saves, its attacks or skills. The only way to reverse this effect is by having the original caster redo the spell on the affected victim. Now this spell has a wonderful, creepy and flavorful effect, but there's no fluff in the spell description itself. But from the rest of the book, I know that this spell comes from the Lady of Broken Branches, who finds pity for those that are lost and broken in the word woods. She stitches them back together and adds them to her court of broken branches to serve and venerate her. So if you were to write an entire background book, then putting that piece of fluff into the spell again might be redundant. But if you're just writing a few spells, this piece of fluff should be part of the spell description. The glass chimes of the bamboo terrace this spell calls forth a floating set of colored glass chimes. The caster alone may strike them, 
producing sounds of great subtlety and penetration. The caster may allow anyone in the desired range to hear the music, or may make it inaudible to anyone save specific targets within range. Such is the expressiveness of the chimes that those who hear them may instantly understand the caster's desired message, however abstract. If the caster strikes the chimes violently as a main action, they may shatter them, causing a deafening clamor that does 3d6 damage to all non-deaf targets within 40 feet, except for the caster. The maximum range of the chimes is 10 miles per caster level, and they persist until shattered or the scene ends. Once again, there's no fluff in this spell, but the spell name and the effect in the description are very flavorful and peculiar. These spells are from Into the Word and Wild and Worlds Without Number, respectively, two books which have great spells in general. Now, let's create our own spell. First, we have to choose a setting. Let's take my own Moons of Balathor one for shameless self-promotion. Second, I have to choose a theme. I choose the Red Queen, one of the Zaubra, the Warlock patrons from the Moons of Balathor. Her blood controls the animals and plants of the wild. Her illusions control emotions and confuse the mind. With that framework in mind, now we can come up with an actual spell effect. And since her blood controls the plants of the wild, how about a word version of the Wall of Thorns from Sleeping Beauty? I'm working on a campaign of grim fairy tales and eldritch horror anyway. The spell effect shall be, it grows a wall of thorny roses that form a defensive labyrinth that misleads, traps and consumes would-be intruders. This spell originates from the Red Queen, so for the spell's name, either the Queen's name or Blood should be in the spell name, like Castle of the Blood Rose. Now, let's add more fluff into the casting. By watering a rose bush with sacrificial blood, on fusing a handful of rose seeds with blood and then planting them, the caster creates a maze-like wall of blood-red rose bushes that will magically mislead trespassers, tread them in thorns and consume them. Once the spell ends, the plants rapidly wither and die. If the plant is destroyed while the spell is still active, its red blood will drench the soil and everywhere it does, writhing red roses will grow to the queen's veneration. And now let's sprinkle even more fluff into there and add a few missing details. Casting time, one hour. It's kind of a ritual, it takes time to plant all of these seeds. Components. A rose bush or rose seeds and a blood sacrifice. Spell duration depends on the natural lifespan of the blood sacrifice. A small animal will let it last a few months, a human for decades, an elf for centuries, while the blood of an immortal would make it permanent. It is said that the castle of the queen herself is fortified by the sacrifice of the gods that once opposed her and that the roses cover an entire country in her thorny embrace. So that is the best spell I could come up with in the preparation for this episode. But potentially you guys are way better in creating spells than I am. So a bit of homework for you. Create a spell. Make it as peculiar and flavorful as you can and post it down in the comments below. I'd love to read what you guys come up with. For now, consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and goodbye.